Hi Year 6. So today you're going to be writing the introduction to your balanced argument and the paragraph or paragraphs with the four motions, so supporting your title. Um, I'm not going to be modelling the introduction again, you can always have a look back at the previous video we did on the introductions or your own work to get ideas for that. I'm going to be focusing on the main body of the text where you put your four arguments together, how to link those, how to give it a nice good flow. Also, how to extend it so it's nice and juicy and not like a teeny tiny paragraph. So, um, let's just have a look and remind ourselves what things should we aim to include in our balanced argument. So, first of all, your introductory paragraphs which should explain why your question is up for debate. Okay, facts and evidence. You did lots of research with your planning yesterday, so hopefully you've got all of that ready to go. In terms of the grammar we'd be looking for, third person, we're looking to keep it impersonal and present tense because it's a current issue. And also in the introduction video, we looked a bit about how to create a formal tone. So using technical vocabulary and passive voice if you really want to challenge yourself. Um, we all did that lesson on conjunctions and adverbial phrases. So you've had practice using those. So I'd really want to see lots of those in your argument, please. And also, in the introductory paragraph, we talked about using parentheses to drop in and add extra detail. And those can be punctuated using brackets, commas or dashes. So just these are some of the things that we'd really like to see in your finished pieces. Um, just as a little useful tool, hopefully, um, you will have seen this word bank of conjunctions that you can use. This is a slightly different one, which is sentence starters. If I move my face out of the way, you can see all of them. Um, definitely good to look at if you're struggling with how to vary your sentence openers or find that you're going next, 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 and, 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 then, 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 stuff like that. So do keep popping back to these. And they have been saved on your assignment as individual documents that should be easier, hopefully, uh, to read if they're not very clear on the slides. So... Let me just cover that one. Sneaky peek. <laughs> um, as I said, I'm not going to be modelling the introduction today. If you need advice on that, have a look back at the previous video. So I suggest you pause here and have a go at writing your introduction first. Then you can come back and look at this video for advice on how to structure that uh, for a paragraph. So good luck with your introduction. Have a look at the previous video if you need reminders for what to include there. Um, once you've done your introduction, pop back here and I'll go through the next paragraph. So, now that you've got your introduction written, hopefully, um, these are the arguments that I came up with for teaching PE in schools, which was the one that I said I was going to be modelling. Even if you chose the same title as me, you may well have different arguments and different statistics to work with. That's absolutely fine. Um, so the three main reasons I chose, one, it's good for health, two, it releases stress, releases happy hormones, endorphins, helps to ease the anxiety that sometimes comes with school, and it builds teamwork skills. Okay, and the statistics or evidence that I found, um, you've already seen the one in five children clinically obese in the UK, so that supports why it's important for health. We could also mention Joe Wicks and all the work he's been doing recently in lockdown to keep children active and getting their heart rates up. There was a statistic here, 82% of school leaders um, were seeing increased levels in stress, particularly in years such as year six, where there is SATs pressure and the anxiety about going to secondary school. And teamwork skills, I didn't find a fact for this one. I just am going to highlight the fact that it's a crucial life skill when you come to adulthood any workplace will require you to work with a team and collaborate. So the earlier we can get those skills enhanced, the better. So you saw a sneak peek of my first sentence there <laughs> due to technical hitches, but I'm going to pop back and have a look at some of the sentence openers to give me an idea of how to start. So I like these green ones. They sound really formal. It's common knowledge that statistics show that it is well known that studies show research suggests so particularly for the ones where I've got a fact or a figure to put in, these would work really well for me. 
So let's pop back and I'll have a go here. Let's get my writing back up. So I had started, it is well known that the end of primary school can be a highly stressful time for many young children. And I want to give a reason here. So I'm going to use a conjunction due to the pressures of SATs exams and the nerves about starting secondary school. Okay, so I want to add in my fact and figure now. So I'm going to go back and I think I might use maybe research suggests or studies show. So let's go here. Maybe I'll combine them. Research shows that 82% of school leaders have noticed an increase in the levels of stress amongst year six pupils. Now I could put in a semicolon here and expand that if I wanted to, but I think I've already explained enough in my first sentence. I'm not going to overrate the point. Um, but now I need to introduce the idea that PE is going to relieve stress. So let's have a read back of what I've got. It is well known that the end of primary school can be a highly stressful time for many young children due to the pressures of SATs exams and the nerves about starting secondary school. Research suggests or research shows that 82% of school leaders have noticed an increase in the levels of stress amongst G6 pupils. Now, if I go back again, I'm thinking that I could use something like consequently, therefore, or for this reason, to explain why it's so important that we do do subjects like PE. So, research shows that 82% of school leaders have noticed an increase in the levels of stress amongst year six pupils. Consequently, subjects such as PE, parenthesis there, um, which um, release endorphins um, help to combat this problem. So let's read that sentence to make sure it makes sense. Research shows that 82% of school leaders have noticed an increase in the levels of stress amongst year six pupils. Consequently, subjects such as PE, which release endorphins, oops, telling me it's a spelling mistake there, let's correct that. Oh, okay. There we go. <laughs> Help to combat this problem. There we go. So you can see how I am trying to expand this paragraph by using a couple of sentences for each point. I'm not just writing one sentence per point. I'm really trying to extend it a little bit more. OK, so I could then add my next point and I think I might go back and have a look. Um, so developing, I could choose more over or in addition. Furthermore, I want to try one of those. So let's say, furthermore, and it is in front of the verb, so it needs a comma. Um, PE gets children active, which is vitally important for their health. Now this is where I could add my next statistic in, and I might use a semicolon here. It's a linked uh, independent clause. In the UK, for instance, um, one in five children are considered obese. So let's see. Furthermore, PE gets children active, which is vitally important for their health. In the UK, one in five children are considered obese. Now remember, after a semicolon, I don't use a capital letter. It's still part of the same sentence, even though it's a new independent clause. Any front of verbials I'm using, I'm putting a comma after them. OK, um, trying to use all these sentence openers to vary the way my sentence starts. OK, and also remember extending those points. So I've popped. Furthermore, PE gets children active, which is vitally important for their health. In the UK, one in five children are considered obese. Now, even though I've already said these two main points on my plan, 
I will continue to expand that and I might write something along the lines of uh, if we don't combat this issue uh, children can face more severe health problems further down the line um, you know external experts such as Joe Wicks I could put him in are noticing this problem and doing additional work so I'm really going to try and pad these out a little bit and make my paragraphs really really interesting for the reader okay so that's not finished obviously yours will be longer it will be um, much more well structured I'm sure because you'll take your time over it um, but hopefully that gives you an idea of how to construct that four paragraph okay using the sentence openers that we're giving you the facts that you've researched fronted adverbials um, parentheses to drop in extra information um, I haven't included any passive in mine yet I think but I have got my conjunctions in there so see if you can uh, do a little better than me and get some passive in yours as well as those other things um, I hope that's helped so use your plan from yesterday um, get your introduction done and then really take your time on these four arguments and build it into a nice solid um, paragraph or two if it gets too long okay enjoy writing i really look forward to reading it and remember don't get carried away the against arguments and the conclusion are saved for tomorrow's assignment so just the introduction and the four arguments today good luck <laughs>